All right, what's up everybody? So today we're gonna talk all about how to get a job in software engineering in 2020. Uh, give you all the best tools and tips. So specifically, we're gonna cover how to set up a personal brand. So we're talking personal website, LinkedIn, GitHub, all that good stuff. We're gonna do a deep dive into how to craft the perfect resume and also to get that resume tailored specifically for each job you apply to, to give you the best chance of getting hired. And last of all, we're going to give you some tips on sourcing jobs, especially during this time. All right, so let's dive right in. All right, so the first topic we got today is how to create a personal brand online. So the first thing you're gonna to wanna to start with is your LinkedIn profile. This is how recruiters find anybody for any role. All recruiters are on LinkedIn. And so essentially, if you create a good profile on LinkedIn, you will get a ton of messages from recruiters that are trying to hire for your type of role. So your LinkedIn should basically just match up exactly with your resume, pretty much. And so just put the most relevant and impressive experiences at the top all the way down, or you can do chronological on LinkedIn. From LinkedIn, you can link to your website and to your GitHub if you have those. All right, so the next step, especially for software engineers, is about having a GitHub profile. So you probably already got one. If not, create one today. And basically you can start to look around to different like open source software projects, put some stars, fork some repositories, and if you want, you can make a couple of contributions with technologies you're interested in learning more about or working with. And so here's a tip. With your GitHub, you can actually pin repositories that you've created, so those are projects that you've built, or if you're a contributor or have just forked an open source project, you can also pin that as well in your profile. And so when recruiters see that, that's gonna just show them kind of like what you've been working on. So definitely use that feature. All right, so the next step is all about your website. If you're a software engineer, the best way you can showcase your work is actually having a portfolio online. So just linking to projects you've built, whether those are like uh, back end, front end, any kind of projects, just have them all on one page on your personal website, and uh, that, that's the best place to showcase your project portfolio and have demos. All right, so the last piece is actually, if you uh, wanna stand above the rest and set yourself apart, you can actually have a blog. So a personal blog, many developers have this, and those are gonna be just uh, look better to a recruiter and get better jobs. And so the best way to start is just twice a week, post some blog post on a technical topic. Maybe you tried like a new language or you work on a new project, post something. And you know, there's a lot of examples online to get you started, two a week for a few weeks, and you're gonna have five to 10 blog posts online. And that's gonna be a presence where recruiters are gonna see, oh, like they're active. Okay, that's great. All right, so next we're gonna teach you how to craft a killer resume and tailor make that specifically for every job that you apply to. So the first step for a resume is basically just the header. So you're gonna have your full name, it's gonna be very easy to read, and you're just gonna put your email and your phone number, and that way the recruiter can contact you at any time, hopefully with good news, right? Now, here's the secret about the header. What you actually wanna do is include your LinkedIn, include your GitHub, your personal website, and your blog, if you have that. So put those as hyperlinks in the PDF so that the recruiter can spend a few seconds checking those out, and basically they're gonna see, oh, like, you know, this candidate definitely has a better online presence, like they have more projects and so forth, so they can just put you right into the callback pile. All right, so the next piece is super important if you're a software engineer. It's all about what technologies do you know and do you use for your daily job? So this one should be very tailor specific to the job listing. So you first you go and check the job posting and see what technologies they require or which ones they would like to see. And then you basically talk about in the technology section of your resume, only those things that are pretty specific to this job or that supplement and complement all of those main technologies. And so basically, if you know something but it's not very relevant, just leave it out. That will make you look more specifically suited to this job and actually help you stand out among people who just put a bunch of generic skills. All right, so the next part is all about your experience and your projects. So first off, work experience. So if you've got a couple of job experiences or many job experiences, you're gonna wanna list those as work experiences and rank them in order of 
how impressive they are by themselves, as well as how relevant they are to the specific job you're applying to. So again, look at that job posting and figure out which of your experiences are the most relevant and impressive and rank those at the top. And so if you actually have a lot of work experiences, it's good to leave off some that just aren't that relevant or just aren't that recent or whatever and only highlight those couple that fit on one page in your resume and really highlight your most relevant skills. So it's just gonna look like this resume looks just like the job description. Now, if you, maybe you're getting started and you know just breaking into software engineering, um, you know, so it might be your first job. And so in that case, uh, you definitely want to highlight on your resume projects that you've worked on that where uh, the same skills that you've used in that project are the ones required for the job because that's basically showing that even though you didn't have a work experience Your experience is still lined up where you've had all this experience working on real projects larger projects significant projects that um, You've used those tools and frameworks and that way when you start at the job You're basically already ready to hit the ground running even for entry-level positions And that's gonna set you ahead of the crowd for the other candidates for entry-level positions All right, so specifically it's all about the bullet points that you put under each of these work experiences and projects. So here's the trick to making really good looking bullet points that really highlight the specific things you've done for that project or in that job. So you wanna use a specific formula. So the first thing to note is it's all about results. So recruiters love seeing this like result that you've actually impacted on the project or to the, you know, maybe it was a performance uh, improvement or something like that. So, um, and you're, so it's basically this uh, formula, right? So you did X, okay by method y okay that achieved result z and so what that might be is like okay um you know so we improved the ranking by using a uh, binary tree and that improved performance 50 percent um so that's just an example uh that i pulled out of thin air but basically that's the idea is you want to say what you did how you did it and then the result and now on the on the other hand you can flip this formula and that way you're gonna sound more natural in your resume using you know a variety of language and so basically the other way is to say the result first and so you can say I achieved result X through Y and you can say that you implemented in Z and that way so basically you could say that uh, from the other example improve performance 50% by implementing a binary tree in Java and that way you can highlight the actual technologies that you use that are gonna be relevant to the job posting so as long as you follow that formula for most of your bullet points um, that's gonna really improve the quality of your resume overall all right just to wrap up the resume section so the final thing you want to think is just tailor specifically your resume to each job posting so what you'll want is a template of your resume that kind of includes everything all your skills all your experiences etc and then for each job posting, you pull up the job posting, you see exactly which technologies and skills they want, and you go and you make a copy of your resume that only highlights those skills and those experiences, and just save it and say like, okay, this is the Java one, or this is the Ruby one, or whatever that is. And that way you can submit that to any jobs that basically match that same format, and this is gonna put you just like one step ahead of everybody else, definitely. All right, so the final piece is all about uh, sourcing jobs, and specifically during 2020. So um, some companies do have a hiring freeze even though they don't say it on their website. So be careful, don't apply to a black hole. Instead, check out some of these websites where you can find job source ings. So the first resource is the spreadsheet. It's crowdsourced, it's got like 150 different opportunities and it should be updated daily. So you'll know roughly you know, if the company is still hiring or not and for what kind of roles, you can sort through it. Uh, there's another spreadsheet specifically for remote jobs, which is great as well. Um, and then there's a couple websites. So the first is covid19hiring.com, uh, which is a great resource. And the other one is called The Breakout List, which is also a great resource specifically for more like breakout startups. So this could be some really cool opportunities to check out. All right, and the last thing you can check out, because a lot of companies are doing hiring freezes, you know, so they'll be like hiring and then they're on a freeze and then they're hiring and then they're on a freeze. So you definitely want to check out the most live information on the day that you apply. And you can do so through uh, candor.co has a page specifically for hiring freezes um, and you can check out there like who is hiring and who's not who's on a freeze that's crowdsourced as well um, candor.co is also just a great resource for negotiating your salary so especially if you're kind of like new to software engineering or you've never really negotiated your salary in the past uh, it's possible you're being underpaid uh, compared to like market rate so yeah definitely look into that as an option all right, everyone, thanks for watching. So these tips should help you really kickstart and jumpstart your job search and give you the specific tools you need to do well during this time.
Uh, this is something that we'd love to talk about more, so we might create more videos to get more deep dive in depth on other aspects of the job search process, how to take phone calls, how to do interview questions, that kind of thing. If you're interested in that, let us know in the comments section. If you think there's something we missed or you have a cool resource, please share that in the comments as well. And finally, if you have any questions that you would like to specifically ask us, we will be reading the comments and replying to those questions to give you some specific advice on how you can do the best at your job search. So please ask. If you like the content we're producing, go ahead and subscribe and that way you're gonna always see when we create new stuff and uh, thanks for watching.